I have been a disc jockey, <clears throat> excuse me, since 1951. I, that's when I got into broadcasting. And uh, I had the great pleasure of playing a lot of the records by the lady who is about to come and join us here. I have great admiration for her. I think she's one of the best singers to ever uh, take a microphone to a voice and attempt to sing. Ladies and gentlemen, and we and disc jockeys made this up years ago, the singing rage, Miss Patty Page. <laughs> Hello, darling. Hello, darling. Thank you. Patty, how are you? I'm great, thank you. I was sitting in an ele elevator out in Hollywood here oh, t two or three years ago. I'm just standing there and figured no one on that elevator knew who I was. And a little voice behind me says, hi, Ralph, how are you? <laughs> and it was, it was Patty. Yes. And I had met Patty years ago. Welcome back to Nashville. Thank you. Nice being here. Didn't you make some records with a couple of friends of mine, uh, George Jones and Tom T. Hall, at one point? I sure did. Nothing ever happened but to them, but I did. <laughs> well, I think George and Tom have the same complaint. No. <laughs> how, did you, how, did you, how did you finally find Tennessee Waltz? Well, actually, Tennessee Waltz found me. Um, we had an office in New York in the Brill Building, and my manager was going to work one morning, and uh, one of the reviewers from uh, Billboard magazine stopped him and said, Jack, we just reviewed a song last night in the rhythm and blues field called Tennessee Waltz mm -hmm. by Erskine Hawkins. And uh, I think if someone like Patty got a hold of it, it would be a smash. So he sent the record down to Jack, et cetera, et cetera. We listened to it. We had a record date coming up, and uh, we added it as uh, an extra side on the date. And Mercury put it out as the B-side of a great Christmas song called Boogie Woogie Santa Claus. <laughs> Which has largely been forgotten. It was forgotten. <laughs> and uh, very quickly it was forgotten. Were, really, no one ever heard it. Were you the first person to do multiple recordings, sing with yourself? Yes, I was, 1947. See, I had always heard that Les Paul invented that, that process. But you did it before Les Paul and Mary Ford did. Uh, well, did. there's always been a big argument about that. Really? Uh, never between Les and I, but a lot of other people have said, well, this one. But this is the just, 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 just. Yeah. I'm, my teeth are coming out. Um, <laughs> all of the statistics show that uh, mine was uh, the first one. All right, what was the first recording that you made where you did the overdubs and sang with yourself? It was a song called Confess, and I was only echoing myself. Uh, I just confess and then confess, confess. And so I didn't sing uh, harmony, but uh, that was the first time it had been done. Have you met Governor Sundquist? Well, I met him just a few minutes ago in the dressing room. Mm -hmm. what, when did, do you happen to know when Tennessee Waltz became a state song in this state? I am not too sure. It, I don't think it was right in the beginning. <clears throat> it took a little while. You know, I, I interviewed Pee Wee King and Red Stewart about writing that song. Yeah. And they, they told me, Cowboy Copas had the first recording of it. But, but they tried to sell it to Cope for $25, and he wouldn't buy it. He wouldn't. <laughs> and, uh, and, of course, Cope probably regretted that the rest I of his guess life. So. Now, we, I want you to explain. Can, can you move this monitor just a little bit, please, so that Patty can see it? Patty uh, and Governor, uh, I told you we had some footage of Governor Browning. This is 1951. I think it's going to be Memphis, and you're going to be in a parade. And uh, this is this is why Tennessee Waltz is a big hit. I don't know what the occasion is, but here you are, in a car with Governor <laughs> Governor Gordon Browning. There's Governor Browning. Do you, do you recall what the occasion was? Well, actually, uh, I was appearing at the Lowe's Theater in uh, Memphis, and uh, he came in to sing with me. <laughs> he did on stage. Yes. <laughs> Would you like to sing? <laughs> I'll move my lips. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was really a nice, it was a nice, and they had the band out at the airport when I came in, and they, the governor was there, and 
it was quite an honor. Did, did, uh, we, I looked at some, uh, some other aspects of that tape. It looked like he flew in on a National Guard plane. How long has the governor had his own plane? Do you know? I don't know. Uh, I believe probably back in the 60s, if, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I believe Tennessee Waltz became the official song under Frank Clements. Really? Uh, time, I believe. And uh, it was always associated with Governor Clement. How many, uh, I'm just curious, Governor, how many of our ex governors have you known? Well, let's see. Going back to Ellington, I had, I've shaken hands with Gordon Browning, but I didn't know him very well. So back uh, prior, I guess, Clement and Browning. Okay. Uh, Prentice Cooper, though. That's, well, you know, Prentice about, Cooper goes back to the 40s. Yeah, so. How about Governor Dunn? He was from Memphis. Oh, absolutely. Governor Dunn is a good friend of mine. So right. I guess uh, Prentice Cooper's son, Jim, I served with in Congress. And Prentice, uh, as you know, lived in Shelbyville. You were, you were a congressman from uh, the Memphis area, weren't you? Well, it was a district that nobody else wanted and I loved. <laughs> all the way from Memphis to uh, almost Nashville. We uh, need to take a break. Are we having too much fun? <clears throat> all right, let me... Let me, let me uh, Mention the fact that after a while we're going to beam up our disc jockey of the week, Joe Hoppel, and his associate Chris Mitchell from WCMS in uh, Norfolk, Virginia. And WCMS holds the distinction of being the radio station that has had a full time country uh, music format longer than any other radio station in America. So we're happy to salute them today. And we'll be giving away the Washburn guitar. We'll be right back right after this. You're watching the Ralph Emery Show, live from the Opry and Anna Hotel, brought to you by American General. Governor, I will give you the pleasure of introducing this next song, if you will, please. It is my pleasure. Ladies and gentlemen, the state song of Tennessee, the Tennessee Waltz, sang, sung by the wonderful and only Patty Page. <laughs> I want to show you, I showed this to Patty earlier, and 
It's just from my personal collection. I collect a few things. And uh, what this is, this is the original recording of Tennessee Waltz on 78. <laughs> and then I got the sheet music, and I got Patty to sign it, and also got Red Stewart and Pee Wee King to sign it. It hangs in my office, but it uh, is indicative of how much I think of you. That's very special. Thank you. Governor, do you have a, a little presentation I there? I do, I do, I do. I have a Tennessee shirt here. Oh, wow. And I want to give you, as long as I'm, as I'm in office, I want you to have a supply of these. <laughs> yeah. Oh, good. And then, Ralph, we have one for you to play golf in. Oh, great. I hope it'll help. Well, uh, <laughs> nothing else has. It hasn't helped me, but maybe it'll give you some money. Well, that's good. Oh, it's, that's got good. Your, it's got your autograph on it. Let me, let me see how I look. Great. Thank you, Governor. Thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. We had a question from someone who wanted to know what Tennessee means. Uh, what, what is the interpretation of Tennessee? Do you have any idea? Well, uh, in the Tennessee Blue Book, which is our manual of information, it says that Tennessee came from Tennessee, uh, a Cherokee word. You know, Sequoia was the first, put the first, first alphabet together for the Indians. And uh, Tennessee was a, a village by the river, the Tennessee River, and an ancient Cherokee, I think it was their capital, as a matter of fact. And uh, as you know, and Patty, perhaps I should tell you, this next year is going to be our bicentennial. Oh, it is. So we're proud of our early roots in the Cherokees and uh, Tennessee and Tennessee both the ancient capital and the state. And you've done more than anybody else that I know of to make Tennessee famous around the world with the Tennessee Wall. So we're grateful for well, you. Well, that brings me to another question. Uh, Jack and Clara Lebrun, who are here from Washington, West Virginia, want to know how many countries have you performed Tennessee Waltz in? Well, let's see. There have been quite a few. Uh, there is one interesting story. Uh, in England, for example, uh, my record was not the first one out there that was released in the pop field. And they cover records, or they did at that time, because of their publishing uh, rights that they had. And uh, so they had uh, all of Mercury records were kept in uh, storage at the uh, export import place until six months, and then the people there could cover them all. And so uh, I thought, well, my record wasn't big over here. I won't sing it when I went over there. <laughs> and so the first show I didn't sing it, and uh, the manager came back and said, why did you leave that song out? And I said, <coughs> Well, it wasn't a hit over here. Nobody knows it. And he said, are you kidding? And so that it was a big underground record over there. So you, so, sung, I guess you've sung it all I over sung the it, world. Um, I guess I haven't been in, in France. I've never sung in France, uh, Italy, Germany. Uh, I do a lot of work in the Orient. Did the Orientals know Tennessee Waltz? So I don't Waltz? know how many countries I've sung it in. And I've do, the, do the Orientals know Tennessee Waltz? They sure do. That was the first American song, a Western song, that they became familiar with. And um, there is a bar in Tokyo called Tennessee Waltz Bar. No kidding. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, By the way, just in passing, Governor, that question about Tennessee came from John O'Neill. Mr. O'Neill's in our audience from Fredericton, New Brunswick, Canada, and that's him right there. Thank you. Uh, you weren't, interestingly, I was reading uh, a bit about your background. You weren't the first Patty Page, were you? No. I don't know who the other girl was, but <clears throat> I was doing a radio show in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and... Um, the show called Meet Patty Page was being done by this particular girl, and I don't know that they had auditioned anybody else. I was doing a weekly show there under my um, one of my real names. <laughs> they left the first one off, and uh, they asked me if I would like to take over the show. 
that she was leaving, and I said, sure. And so I became Patty Page, and I was a sophomore in high school. You were Clara and, Fowler, weren't you? Yes. Isn't that a nice name? <laughs> yeah, it's all right. But you became Patty. Did you ever have it legally changed? To yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did you ever, uh, being from Tulsa, did you ever work with Bob Wills? Sure did. Really? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Get up and sing with that big Western swing band? Oh, yeah. yeah. I did a lot of uh, Western music in uh, Tulsa with first record I ever made was with Al Clauser and his Oklahomans. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. And I did a, a noon show on uh, the NBC show with Leon McCullough, and then I would do my regular pop show in the afternoon at 3. Don't you hold the distinction of having had a program of your own on ABC, NBC, and CBS? Uh-huh. Yeah, I thought I so. kept moving. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Gary, how about now, when you get your own television show, Governor, you can make these requests. And I, I asked Miss Patty Page if she would sing one of my favorite Patty Page songs. I'm sure, you remember Old Cape Cod. I do very well. And so, ladies and gentlemen, here is Miss Patty Page to sing Old Cape Cod. <laughs> You're fond of sand dunes and salty air Quaint little villages here and there You're sure to fall in love with old Cape Cod That old Cape Cod If you like the taste of a lobster stew Served by a window with an ocean view You're sure to fall in love with old Cape Cod sky of blue Church bells chiming on a Sunday morn Remind you of the town where you were born If you spend an evening you want to stay Watching the moonlight on Cape Cod Bay You're sure to fall in love with old Cape Cod You're sure to fall in love You're sure to fall in love Old Cape Cod. Oh, Very nice. Someone told me that of all your songs, that is your favorite. Well, yes, it is, along with Tennessee Waltz. My father's favorite song was Tennessee Waltz, and so that's always been mine. So I have two of them, really. Someone asked me the question, did Tennessee Waltz go number one? I think it did for a well, long time. <laughs> I think it was there about 13 weeks, and it was in the top 10 for 26. What were the other big hits? Uh, Allegheny Moon? Allegheny Moon, uh, You Belong to Me, um, Detour, uh, Mockingbird Hill, Cross Over the Bridge, so I Mama. Went to Your Wedding. So Mama from the Train. <laughs> I used to think that was the funniest title I ever heard. There, she really recorded a song called Throw Mama from the Train, and then you paused, A Kiss. 
Yes. And this jockey's had a lot of fun with that record. They sure <laughs> did. I know that. <laughs> Governor, you uh, uh, didn't you work with uh, Senator Howard Baker? I supported uh, Howard all his entire time, and when he ran and he was a senator, then I managed his presidential campaign, 1979. But I never worked for him in the Senate or anything. Didn't you take him to the horse show down in Shelby? Oh, I did. And uh, we, uh, it was 1966. We went there, and it was not the best time to be a Republican in Tennessee. He was going to present the roses, and a roar came up as we went to center stage, and he said, I bet that's Frank Clement. Turned out to be Gordon Browning. <laughs> and then he put the roses on the horses, on the horse, and the horse tried to bite him three different times. <laughs> so I don't believe the senator's been back to the horse show since. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I just had an idea, and Governor, I don't want to tell you how to run the bicentennial, but it might be nice for Patty Page to be there at St. Tennessee Waltz. Well, we were talking about that backstage. I can't think of it. We need to take a break, my friends. We'll be back right after this.